In the mid-1990s, the equivalent of today's Dairy New Zealand used to hold a Dairy Mormons conference every couple of years. I was at my first one in Rotorua, listening to Jenny Vernon, the first woman to be awarded a Nuffield Scholarship. I thought, what a woman! Her determination and intellect saw her achieve a personal goal and one to encourage other women to aim for. Also in that room was 200 women whose energy and enthusiasm I could feel all around me. Their school base was evident to me from their discussions in the workshops and at meal breaks. What an amazing resource for the dairy industry, I thought as I drove home. Yet when I went to the dairy company meetings, they were not there. And when I went to the local farming discussion groups, they were not there. I also had become aware, having left my off-farm career in management to return full-time to the farm, that there was a lack of recognition of Daring Woman's contributions. In my mailbox was an advertising pamphlet for air tags addressed to Mr. Farmer. Daring magazine advertisements only featured men, as did many of the articles. The women were actually busy on the farm, but invisible to reporters. When farm salespeople came to the door phoned, it was, can I speak to the boss? Assuming straight away as the woman, I could not possibly be that person. I was not used to such treatment and got quite angry, so wrote to the advertiser and started to think about more ways to change the attitude within the industry and to the service providers to the dairy farmers. I wondered what I could do to get the woman more involved. I talked to the Farmhouse Conference organiser Karen Martelletti and she told me about a women's discussion group at Taupri. I visited the group to get ideas and at the next conference in Tauranga in 1997, I got Karen to advertise I wanted to start a group for the Otrahonga Tiamuda area. The interests were strong and after a while we got support from a consulting officers from Dairy New Zealand equivalent at that time. This discussion group is still going well today. At that 1997 Tauranga conference, Hilary Webber spoke in her dairy company director role. She too urged the woman to get involved in the industry. Here was a woman that inspired me to pursue my involvement in the industry and to look at how more women could be involved. By that stage I'd met Christina Baldwin through my dairy company supplier rep role and she too was keen to see women's involvement progressed in the industry. Her passion was evident to me. She had great knowledge and experiences to draw on, including her participation in the International Women's Agricultural Networks and Conferences. In 1998, Willie Geck, current network chair, Hilary Weber, Christina Baldwin and myself got together. We shared a desire, a dream, to start a supportive network for women in Deering to help them increase their knowledge of the business, develop confidence to participate at all levels of the industry and promote recognition of the varied roles that these women played. That same year I was selected as one of two supplier reps to join dairy company directors including Hilary Weber to travel overseas to study cooperatives in America and Europe. Our group's recommendation to separate the director's governance roles from representation by forming a shareholders council was adopted and continued when Fonterra was formed. I later became a Fonterra shareholder councillor, working on the Fonterra cooperative principles with directors and part of a council project team, helping with the first capital structure review. I was fortunate in receiving plenty of support and recognition from both men and women in the industry and my husband. They encouraged me to take up these opportunities to participate in the industry. Yet the statistics told a different story for many women with little representation in dairy industry decision-making groups. In 2000, I did my Kellogg's paper through Lincoln University, highlighting the need to recognize Daring Women's contribution, identifying barriers to their participation in the industry, and how the Network for Women in Daring could help. Through the network, we were able to get the media to pay attention to Daring Women's involvement. At our inaugural conference in 2000, we got media coverage with our speaker, the US Ambassador Carol Mosley Bourne. At our 2001 conference, there was coverage on the front page of the Business Herald about the Daring Women's Network. I've had an amazing journey with the network. Hilary, Christina and Willie were three women who each brought a variety of skills, networks and experiences together with myself to start this group. It was a foundation for me to be continually inspired by them 
and other adhering women around me. Whether at a network trust board meeting, conference, Dairy Day or regional group meeting, I would walk out of those places feeling like I'd had a blood transfusion of enthusiasm and energy that kept topping up the passion in me for the dairy industry and those involved. Those women's skills, experience and support they gave so generously to those around them, men and women, in their own dairy business or career and in their real communities. I see my ongoing challenge is to raise their awareness and those in the industry of what an amazing contribution these women make and the potential that is within each of them to be involved in decision making of the dairy industry so that it can continue to meet challenges today and in the future and ensure we are all involved in a sustainable, sound business.